A very good morning to Agape Suramban and Agape Nilai. Welcome back to our Sunday online experience. Well, it's not too late for you to invite someone to join us for service this morning. All you need to do is to click on the invite button that pops up in the chat box and it will send a same standardized message across all messaging platforms. Well, trust that you are ready for worship this morning. Let's stand to our feet and get ready for a time of praise and worship. Good morning, Agapians. Welcome to Church Online. We are so thankful to have you here as we sing, as we declare our praise to our Lord and our King and our Master. Let our praise rise. Let our eyes turn to you. Our hearts are yearning for you, God. Our hope is being stirred as we seek your face, as we long for you. To sing that out. Praise is rise. Turning to you, we turn to you and hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you, oh Lord. We long for you because when we see. Washed away, washed away.
God. You'll be praised, oh God. Your name, oh God, is worthy to be worshipped, to be adored.
your name, oh God. There is none like you, Jesus. We are in awe of your presence, God. We worship and we adore your name, oh God. The name that is above every other name. None can compare to you, God. None can compare to you, God. We adore you, God. We ascribe greatness unto your name, God. For you are worthy. You are worthy of all our worship. You are worthy of all our praise, oh God. There is none beside you, God. Thank you, God. you with all that we are God you deserve the highest praise you deserve to be worshipped and adored even when we don't have the words to say it our hearts from deep within from deep within we worship you God our inner man worships you God oh we are created for your pleasure we are created to worship you God We thank you, O God, for this time, O God. We thank you for this privilege, O God, that we have to worship you from the comforts of our homes, O God, that we still have this privilege to come into your presence any time of the day to worship you, O God, to be found in your presence, O God. I pray, Jesus, that we be found in your presence every day, O God, not just on Sunday mornings, O God, but every day we will run into your presence, O God. For we find rest, we find hope, we find peace, we find healing, we are restored. We are kept under the shadow of your wings in your presence, O God. We adore you, Jesus. We thank you for this time, O God. We just pray that you bless the rest of the service, O God. May you be glorified in every part of God. We thank you, God. Take pleasure in our worship, in our praise, in our giving, O God. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Right now, we'd like to collect this morning's tithes and offering. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. Lord, we count it as a privilege, O God, to be able, O God, to pour into your kingdom, O God. Lord, we pray even as we bring our very best to the table. Lord, we ask, O God, that, Lord, you will bless every cheerful giver. And, Lord, we know, O God, that our giving, O God, has the ability, O God, to touch lives here and beyond, O oh God. So use us to be a channel of your blessing. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. To give your tithe and offering, click on the Give button that pops up in the chat box. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. You can continue to give through online transfer, ATM bank-in, or physical drop-off at church. Now here's an update on our mission pledge. As of 30th December 2020, we have collected a total of RM88,069 ringgit between July to December 2020. And we just want to say, well done, church. As mentioned before, a large portion of the mission fund will go to help individuals families and churches that are affected by the COVID-19. And we want to thank each and every one of you here who have contributed enormously to this mission pledge. And I want you to know that your giving has the ability to touch lives here and beyond. Here is the breakdown of our mission fund usage.
Here are some updates on our latest COVID situation at Agape. A statement update by our senior pastor has been released and is made available on our church website, social media platforms and also made known to all our church leaders. Our church facilities will also be undergoing a thorough sanitizing next week and we will keep you updated on our social media platforms. So do make sure to follow us on Facebook and on our Instagram page as well. Now, over the final week of 2020, our Children Church Online Gift Redemption took place. So now, our Children Church teachers will be packing and sending the gifts you ordered to your doorsteps. Well, I guess Christmas is not over for some of you, after all. Now, last Friday, a new episode of Faith Uncensored was also released on our YouTube channel. And you don't want to miss this episode especially because it's entitled Pantang, Pantang, all right? So do check it out and be blessed by this episode. This past week has seen an unprecedented surge in new COVID-19 cases. And as such, we are anticipating a more stringent form of the movement control order to be implemented. Now, moving forward, we definitely will have to do church differently. Though we are scheduled to reopen and have physical church services on site on January 17, it is only prudent that we continue to go online for all services until further notice. We are God's church without walls, gathered to worship God wherever, no matter what. So we want to encourage all of you to join us for worship online every Wednesday and Sunday. Trust that you are ready for the word this morning. Join me as you welcome Reverend Joshua Young. Good morning, Church for Agape Seremban and Agape Nilai. Once again, we are back online. And as you know, uh, I'm better in front of people than with uh, uh, recorded messages such as this. So bear with me. You see, I fumble my words and uh, try to bring this message to you. Let us pray. Father, we just want to commit this time to your hands. Lord, we just pray that whoever that's watching this, whether they're at home, in the car, in their laptop, or their handphone devices, God, we pray that your word will be delivered powerfully your word will be delivered personally, God, into your heart. We pray to you right now, O Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, you begin to work in the hearts of every hearer, that we will not just be hearer of your word, but doer of your word. Holy Spirit, begin to work in our hearts, that we will respond to your word this morning, O God. As so we commit ourselves into your hands, take charge and take lead. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. All right, church, the title of my sermon this morning is Build Deep not big. Build deep, not big. Usually, I will take from a passage and I will do a background. Uh, we call it um, exegesis. I will do a background check and I explain to you what the words mean. But this morning, I want to share with you from what I've observed from our recent uh, uh, experience from all this, all this crisis and just allow me to just share with you from there. And the main two passages that I'll be taking from is Galatians chapter 6 and also John Chapter 15. Now, what a year we had last year, 2020, uh, is really unprecedented. And what a year we will have this year. A lot of things are uncertain. We have gone through this season together uh, as a church and also as individuals. All of us have our own journey to take. The various forms, forms of our MCO and the series of extension of it, the church service on site. Closing, reopening, closing, re-reopening again. Now we even hear of news of a mounting pressure uh, of the much-needed MCO 2.0, so to speak, or a stricter CMCO in view of the coming Chinese New Year to curb the spread of COVID-19, which we may see a ban of interstate travel or even a ban of all religious gathering. And this is why our church will continue to go on online until further notice. And in all these things, I can say is this. COVID fatigue is real. I can sense that people are getting tired of this, yet we still need to be very vigilant about it. And in such a season in time where we have no control over what is happening, we can't help but to wonder, what is God doing in all this? And what can we do in all these things, perhaps to get something out of it? At least in this crisis, there's a purpose. Well, the wisest man on earth, King Solomon, said in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 2, he says that for everything, there's a season, a time for every activity under heaven, 
a time to plant and a time to harvest. Arguably the greatest apostle, Paul uses a similar concept of planting and harvesting to describe life. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and also verse 9, says this, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God, His system, His way of working. You will always harvest what you plant. Let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. There's planting and harvesting in life. Or for the corporate people, we use the word investing and a return of investment. Or as a church, we are more familiar with the term sowing and reaping. We want to reap what we sow. But we often forget that in between sowing and reaping, there's a process with it. And it takes time. We won't reap immediately what we sow. It has to go through a process of growth, of waiting. And it takes time from sowing to reaping. And the Word of God promised that God's justice will not be mocked. And this is what we can be assured of. That whoever plant will harvest. You will reap what you sow. Especially in this context, it's talking about spiritual seeds, the fruit of the Spirit. When we give Him to the Spirit of God, when we obey Him, when we live a life that pleases the Spirit, that we yield to the Holy Spirit, we will reap a harvest of blessing. And this can be true in other aspects in our life as well as we uh, live our life according to the Word of God. The harvest is inevitable, but the in-between growing time is invisible. And this is what the Word of God promised. There may be long stretches of waiting, of silence, uncertainty, or even right now, a cease of activity. But the Word of God promises that whoever keep planting good seeds will reap a harvest of blessing. So church, don't give up. Productivity over activity. Productivity over activity. No activity on the surface doesn't mean there's no productivity under the ground. Sometimes we have so much activity, but we are not going anywhere with it. God wants to assure us that as long as we continue to sow good seeds, He will work the seeds and He will give growth even while underground, even behind the scene. God is doing His work with our good seeds. We continue sowing good seeds, although we may not see the fruits on the surface just yet. And God is surely doing something in us as we continue to sow and wait. But you may ask, what may God be working in this season where activity is ceased? How can we be productive still underground to sow seeds into the soil? And that's where my first point comes. God is preparing you for something. God is preparing you for something. There's time for everything under the sun and there's season for everything. We may not know the reason for our season in life, especially autumn or even winter season such as this, where there is a cease of major activity, where our life seems to be put on hold with minimal activity. There's a cease of things. There's a dying of things, so to speak. And in such a season, instead of asking God why, it's more productive and helpful to ask God what. God, what are you preparing me for? What can I do to prepare myself? And what seeds should I be sowing? And perhaps for some of you, God is preparing something for you. Now the thing about winter is that when the ground is covered with snow and you can't see what's happening under the ground, you can't, I mean underneath the, um, the, the snow or the ground, you can't see and therefore you can't prepare for spring. It can be new flowers, new plants growing here and there. And we can't see all these things. But one thing we can be assured of. In John chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. Jesus described God as a gardener. And the gardener knows how to grow plants. He understands the nature of things. He understands seasons and the purpose and the process of growth and the purpose for different seasons. A gardener knows there's purpose for winter as well. Winter makes way for spring. Winter is a preparation process for spring. 
And the thing about winter is that you can't skip winter. You can't skip totally and try to reach spring. You can't just jump or fast forward to spring. You simply need to grow, go through the process and meanwhile, be prepared for what spring may bring. We have to go through the autumn and the winter process for spring to come. So that when spring comes, we are well prepared. We know what to do. Zig Ziglar, Zig Ziglar um, said this, a very famous quote. He said, success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. Success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. And I like what uh, John Max, how John Maxwell summarized it. He said that preparation plus opportunity equals to success. Preparation plus opportunity equals to success. Opportunity is what other people give you. Preparation is what you can give yourself. And it's the only thing in this formula of success which you can do something about, which you're in control of. And John Wooden, he's actually one of the mentors of John Maxwell, he said this, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare, which means that you need to prepare before the opportunity comes, before spring comes. While you're still in winter, start preparing yourself. Winter need not be a time of barrenness, but a time of preparation. Because in winter, the ground gets to rest. In winter, the nutrients in the ground gets rejuvenated, it gets renewed. Winter prepares the ground for spring. Winter prepares the ground for spring. And this is something that we can look forward to. And remember that the harvest is inevitable. It will come. And, but the in-between growing time is invisible. You can't see it. But the fruit of your seed will show for all to see. The hard work which you put in when no one is seeing, your fruit will show. People may not see the seed underground, but your fruit will show. So when what you sow in the ground will eventually surface when it's ripe for harvest. I still remember the days when we first envisioned people coming together uh, to do life together in KL and Neeline. So we actually started the current uh, KL Connect Group, uh, which we call it Family One right now, and also our Neeline Connect Group. This is about a few years ago. And I still remember the fellowship is full of life. Uh, there's a lot of the, the work is joyful. Uh, the people is nice. We gather together. We do life. And of course, in fellowship, there's always makan time. And, and we really enjoy those moments. But I have to admit, the driving up after work, after a dinner, having run the whole uh, uh, connect group, staying back for the fellowship, and then driving back down after the fellowship. And by the time it's usually near or past midnight. And you know, Agapians, you know we can't say goodbye. Every time we meet in connect group, we can't seem to say goodbye. We say bye-bye, I'm going back now. It's about maybe 10, 30, 11, we say bye. And then as we clean up the things, we still talk and then we say bye. So from the dining, uh, from the kitchen table to the dining hall, perhaps to the gate, to outside the gate, Okay, uh, when you're near a car, we are still talking, we are still fellowshipping. We just can't seem to get uh, say goodbye. So by the time I get to go back, normally it's chuff. Uh, when I leave, uh, whether it's KL or Nilai. So when I reach home, it's usually uh, after midnight. And I can tell you, it is very, not just very tiring, it is very trying. Not at first when the excitement is high, but weeks after weeks, week in, week out, for months, for months. Because when you start the connect group, you need to be physically there. You need to take charge, you need to take lead. You are the life, the energy, and the passion of the group. And it takes a lot out of you. Because as a leader, you set the tone for the group. And you want to set it right, and you want to set it high. And I can say every time when I was driving back, I was fighting sleepiness. I was fighting sleepiness, especially from KL. It takes about 45 minutes to maybe one hour sometimes. Uh, uh, I get sleepy. I really sometimes I will just doze, uh, doze off. It's very dangerous. Don't do that. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, Kenny Yap who volunteered to join me in this work and to actually drive me up sometimes and actually drive me down. Um, these are the early days of pioneering the contact group uh, before Guan and Hui Hun actually uh, step up to take lead of the group and they have been doing a fantastic job 
ever since. And what I want to share from this story is this. The hard work of sowing and waiting for it to grow. Sowing and waiting for it to grow. While juggling other responsibilities and growing other areas in your life. All these are unseen underground. These are behind the scene. No one sees all this. But you just sow and sow and sow and you wait for your harvest time. All this sowing is basically preparing you for harvest, preparing you for growth. And when the time is right and right, God says He will promise whatever we sow, especially spiritual seeds, whatever we sow, we shall reap a harvest of blessings. So church, don't give up. Keep sowing good seeds. So we may ask ourselves this question. What is God preparing you for in this season? What is God preparing you for in this season? What kind, what seed can you keep sowing without seeing the fruits yet? Perhaps we need to take time to see a vision, like Pastor Ben uh, preached, see a vision, set some goals, and strive towards it with actionable plan. A dream is a dream until you make the dream come true. A vision is just a vision until you make it into a reality. And you need to do something about it. You need to strive. You need to have a plan. You need to keep sowing for it to come to pass. And I always tell people this. Keep sowing now so that you can reap a great harvest in due time. You reap a harvest later, but you will reap it nevertheless. It will come. Your spring will come. And I remember last year when we have this whole MCO thing and uh, well, uh, when we are stuck at home, you know, we are called to work from home and I kind of feel that might as well study, right? So I actually managed to finish three subjects for my master's. Um, and because of that, because I'm reading book and always with my assignment, I get to pick up a new habit of reading one hour a day. And it will amount to maybe about uh, one to two books a month, depending on how thick is the book and how fast I get to read it. One thing I have to say is this, it has helped my, it has helped sharpen my thoughts. It has helped widen my perspective on how I look at things. Uh, it has challenged my belief as well. And it has do me more good, actually. So what I learned from all these things is sometimes in a season of winter, in a season of waiting, in a season of sowing and not knowing what is happened, uh, what, what is going to happen, of sowing seeds yet not seeing the fruits, I can say is that when you keep sowing, eventually you will reap something out of it. But you need to have an actionable plan. You can't just dream it. It's something that we need to put into practice. For example, uh, we must have a vision first. My vision is to see myself grow to be a confident, mature person, a confident, mature leader. That's my vision. But what is my goal? That's the vision. What is my goal? My goal to achieve my vision is this. This year, I wish to finish my Master of Leadership Development and maybe learn something new every day. Every day, learn something new. It can be from reading, it can be uh, conversation with people. Regardless, I want to be very, intentionable, uh, very, intention, uh, very intentional about learning, about reading. So what is my action plan? Good vision, uh, good goals, but what do I do about it? What can I actually do my action plan? I've chose to read one hour a day and definitely don't ponting my master class. When it comes, I'll just sign up. I'll just sign up and just go for it. No excuse regardless of how busy uh, or what I have uh, on my plates. So for Agape 2021, uh, Pastor Ben has uh, given us the direction, which is uh, the direction for this year is to rebuild our church, rebuild our spiritual life, especially in corporate worship and personal discipleship. So what can you sow in rebuilding your spiritual life, namely corporate worship and personal discipleship? Do you have a vision for yourself, goals that you want to achieve, and what can you do, your action plan? What can you do like right now? And I always tell people, dream big, start small. Start now and build deep, build deep. What can you do to connect with God closer through worship? And what can you do to grow in God deeper through the study of His Word? In all these things, what can you do about it? 
Choose to sow even when times are bad. Choose to sow even when you are tired. You know, uh, when times are trying. In fact, especially when times are trying, continue sowing. Don't give up. Keep sowing when life sees all activities. Keep preparing in winter as spring will come. Keep preparing knowing that productivity is under the ground and that God is preparing you for something, for something bigger, for something larger. That's why you need to prepare yourself. Your spring will come, church. Your spring will come. So what you prepare underground, what you prepare in winter matters before whatever you plant underground will surface. We always hear about preparing ourselves for our rainy days and storing food for winter. But just as true, it's also important for us to prepare for sunny days, to prepare for spring to come. Prepare now, harvest later, so that when harvest comes, we know what to do and we are prepared for it. So my first point is this. God is preparing you for something. My second point, God is pruning something from you. In John chapter 15, verse 2 and then verse 4, the Bible records this. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that bears, that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the wine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And I noticed something funny here. It says that if you, if you don't bear fruit, if you don't bear fruit in your life, you will get cut off and thrown away. But if you bear fruit, you will still get cut. You get cut back. You get pruned. Even more so that you can be more fruitful. So either way, you bear fruit or you don't bear fruit, you will get cut and it will be painful. But there is a big difference in being cut off and thrown away or cut back as in pruning. It's, a, it's the trimming of the plant. One is to be thrown away, and the other is so that the plant can bear even more fruits. Big difference. Big difference. So in this season where activity ceases, and God is taking the time to prepare you underground, to prepare you for something, make sure that you stay connected to Him. Remain in Him, Jesus said, and He in you. Because you know that when God prepares you for the spring, he will prune you. He will, pruning means cutting. He will take away things that are not good in your life. It involves cutting and it will be painful. But at, uh, but at least in all this pain, in all this uh, pruning process, in all this cutting away things that will not be healthy or helpful to us, in all this, at least you know, is for a purpose. And you are safe in Jesus' hands. You are safe when Jesus begins to cut certain things in, you, in your life. For he is good, he is merciful, and there's a purpose in the pruning. It's not for nothing. So what is God pruning you from in this season? What is God cutting away in your life? Let's get real and take some time here. Perhaps it's your temperament. Perhaps it's your weakness. Let's be very real here, church. Let's be very real. I will take my time to just read my script that's in front of me, okay? Before you just say, no, no, this is not for me, just take time, okay? And allow the Spirit of God to convict your heart. Hard truths are hard, but it's truth nonetheless. And it's good for people to look at the Word of God, to allow the Spirit of God to convict us, and we allow God to work in us and through us. Perhaps God is pruning some of our habits in our life that He needs to take away. It can be our work ethics. Are we compromising? Are we not giving our best? Perhaps it's behavior. How is our behavior? Our mannerism. Our relationship with our family, with our neighbors, church members even. Our attitude. Our arrogance. Our ignorance, and sometimes this is sad, ignorance. We, we don't see what we don't see. And we don't know what we don't know. And we need to ask God for wisdom, ask God to open up our eyes, help God, ask God to help us to be humble so that we learn. And this can be hard to take. How about spiritual 
dryness. Maybe in this season, there's a lack of passion, a lack of compassion, a lack of patience, a lack of faith to believe greater things to come, a lack of hope because we have been waiting and waiting and waiting, a lack of love because our heart has gone cold, or even lack of character. And I say all this, including me. And it's not easy to take. No matter what discipline God put us through, no matter what life throws at you, how hard it may be, Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. And some seasons in life can be cold, it can be hard, where nothing works and nothing grows. And you can't see the purpose in it, let alone spring. But the Word of God says, remain in Jesus. Trust in His pruning process. As you continue to sow in your spirit, sow spiritual seeds in yourself, invest in other areas in your life, in your skill, in your uh, emotional health, in your mental health, mental strength, mental resilience, sow in all these things so that you grow. Invest in your growth, spiritual or other areas in your life. So in other people's life as well, for it's not just about us in life. If nothing else, if nothing else, just remain in Him. Resilience is built through resistance, just like going to gym. Resist running away from pruning. Resist running away from discipline. Resist running away from Jesus. Remain in Him. Remain in the process, remain in the pruning of God. Let the process complete His work, it, uh, its work in you. Remain in Jesus, just trust what He's doing, He knows what He's doing. God our Father is the gardener, and the gardener knows how to prune, a gardener knows how to grow, a gardener knows how to make a plant beautiful and fruitful. Trust, trust in God. Don't wander away, don't leave just remain. Don't give up, don't let down, just remain. When you feel that God is far away, just remain. When you feel God is not with you, just remain. When you feel that your heart has gone cold without fire, there's no passion or hope, just remain in Jesus. When you, when it feels like singing and praying and reading the Bible are just like empty words, Keep singing, keep praying, keep reading, keep living for Jesus. Keep on keeping on. Your spring will come. Your spring will come. For God's system, His design will not be mocked. Whoever sow good seeds, especially spiritual seeds, you will reap a harvest of blessings, says the Word of God. And this is a promise from God. So in all these things, in short, keep on sowing and keep on remaining in Him. Because all of this is preparing us for something. And God is pruning something in, from our life. It's cutting off something. And all of us have to go through this season of preparation and pruning. And we can't skip this process. We can't skip winter just to reach spring. Since all of us need to go through it anyway, since we need to be pruned anyway, might as well stay with God and get something out of it. Let God prune you as you prepare. Wait for harvest time, for your spring will come. Allow God to work His pruning in you so that God can work through you, and through you, you will bear more fruits, more fruits. God will bear more fruits for you. There are some trials in life where you just need to endure. Some life lessons that you can never learn without experiencing it firsthand. I'm sure some of you who are older, you will know this is so true. This is so true. Some lessons you may know theory, you may know how it feels, but unless you go through it yourself, the work is not complete in you. Hard lessons especially. And sometimes in life, the race does not go to the swift. It may not go to the strongest but it will go to the one who endures until the end. 
You can't know God is light without being in darkness. You can't know God is strength without being helpless. You can't know that God is your victory without experiencing failure after failure on relying on your own strength. You can't know all this until you just remain in God and allow the pruning process to be completed. You can't produce pearl without a long time of process. You can't produce diamond without much pressure. You simply need to go through the process, church, the pruning process. My third point is this. God is proving, proving, God is proving something through you. In John chapter 15, verse 8, the Bible records, this is to my Father's glory that you will bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Sometimes the greatest transformation you will ever have, the greatest light you will ever shine, the greatest testimony you will ever share is when you go through hardship in your darkest days, enduring the cold winter, painful pruning, yet choosing to remain in Jesus. God can shine the brightest in your darkest time to give you hope, to give you strength, to give you inspiration. And through you in this whole process, to give hope, strength and inspiration to someone else who is going through the same or similar experience. God can prove that He is good and He is faithful and He is gracious through His experience, all His life experience with you. And people can see that through you and in you. When you stand for God and with God in all these things, someone else may see it and through you they will gain hope and strength to stand for God and to stand with God. When God writes His story together with you, He will begin to write a story for someone else as well. He can write a story about you and him, a story that you will treasure, a story that you will keep. But through God, through writing this story with you, he'll begin to write a story for someone else and your story will intertwine. Someone that will come into your life and meet you and be inspired by what you're going through with him. They will be inspired by your story as God writes a story with them as well. God is writing your story today. God is writing your story and your story matters. For God is writing another story to another person through you. So when you allow God to prepare you for something, when you allow God to prune something from you, then God will be able to prove something through you so that people will know that you are His disciples and He is your God. He is your God. You get to bear fruit for Him and you get to reveal who God is to other people. So right now, you ask yourself this question in this season. What is God proving through you? What is God proving through you? Church, I've said much, and there's much for us to absorb, there's much for us to reflect and take. And my concluding point is this. In this season where all major activities are ceased, you can still be productive until spring comes. You can be productive in your winter. Until take this time away from busyness, to take stock of your spiritual life, to take stock of your over, overall life, and to see where you are right now and where you want to be. Perhaps we do this exercise, and I hope you can do it with me right now at this moment. How satisfied are you with your life now? How satisfied are you with your life now? Be very specific. It can be your spiritual life, your work life, family life, relationship, your friendship, social life, your skills, personal growth. Pick one area in your life. And then you rate from 0 to 10 of how satisfied you are. 0 to 10. Be realistic about this. Be honest. 0 to 10. 
Say we take five. Maybe for me, I'll just take five. Then the second question is this. How satisfied, how satisfied do you want to be later? How satisfied do you want to be later? Rate from zero to 10. Zero to 10. Of course, zero being your least satisfied and 10 most satisfied. Say, perhaps, I hope I can be this year, within this time frame, this year, I hope that by the end of this year, I can be seven to eight. That I'm satisfied with my life. The third question, what can you do to move from here to there? From just for myself, let's say from five to seven or eight in terms of my satisfaction level, from five to seven to eight. So what can I do from here to be here? What can I do from here to be here? At least those practical things that you can do to begin sowing in yourself so you get to achieve your satisfaction level. Set a vision for yourself, church. Take this moment, write it down, spend some time praying, asking for God, and let it be as realistic as it can be. Write it down. See a vision for yourself. See a vision. How do you see yourself to be by end of this year? Or even three months, six months, nine months, or uh, 12 months. Set a time, see a vision, a vision of yourself. And then begin to set some goals. What are some goals? What are something for me to achieve for me to turn the vision into a reality? See a vision, set some goals, and then strive towards it with action plan. Strive means start sowing, start doing so that you can achieve those goals. And by achieving the goals, you're fulfilling your personal vision. And our church vision for this year is corporate worship and personal discipleship. And we can take part in rebuilding this aspect of our life. So right now, church, right after the whole service end, perhaps take some quiet time. Take time to reflect on yourself, to ask God to search your heart, to reveal things to you. Work with God honestly as God works in you and for you. Invest in yourself as God is investing in you. Allow God to prepare you for something by pruning something from you, cutting away something from you, and proving something through you. You will be able to experience God like you've never experienced before. And someone else will see your life and be inspired by it. And they will, as a result, they'll draw themselves closer to God as you draw closer to Him. Hope for the in inevitable harvest. That means it will come. Nothing will stop it. Hope for the inevitable harvest on the surface. It will come one day and you will get to see it. But work in the invisible growth underground. Begin to work. One day it will come out. So my concluding thought is this. During this season, don't build big. Don't go big. Don't build big. But build deep and build strong. For that is your foundation. And when you have a strong foundation, when you can take things, when God knows that He can begin to build upon you and on you and on you, He will know that you have a strong foundation and He will build you higher and higher and higher for Him. Because God knows you can take it. You have the capacity, you have the ability to take in what God has in store for you. So church, keep building deep and keep building strong so that God can build high through you and for you. Amen? Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you, O God, that you are a good God. And you are the God of every season in our life. And we can trust in you for your character is good. And there's a purpose in every season, O God, even in winter season. So right now, we want to pray for every Agapian in Jesus' name that you begin to work in us and begin to work through us, O oh God. I pray right now you open up our spiritual eyes that we are able to see some areas in our lives that you are preparing us for, that you're pruning all these things away, O oh God. Help us to have a vision of ourselves in you and for you and begin to allow you to prune us, to work in us, O oh God, to have that vision for ourselves and to fulfill that vision of ourselves, O oh God. For we want to be in your will, O oh God. So right now, we just want to pray in every aspect of our life, there shall be growth, 
that even as we continue to sow seeds, uh, spiritual seeds of God, of good works, begin to sow in ourselves, we pray we will be hardworking, we will keep on sowing, even when times are tough, times are bad, times are trying, oh God, we will not give up sowing, we will not give up doing good, whether it's for others or for ourselves, we will, we will keep investing, for we believe that you are preparing us for something, and our spring will come for your glory. And all the people will know that we are your disciple and you are our God, that you will have all the glory as you begin to work in us and work through us, O oh God. So we surrender a whole church into your hands. May Agape in the year 2021 experience a rebuilding of spiritual life that will be stronger than ever before in the area of corporate worship of God and personal discipleship. Let there be growth and great breakthrough, oh God. And help us to go through life together with you, knowing that you're going to do great things in us and do great things through us. All for the glory of your name. In Jesus' most precious name we all pray. Amen. Amen. What a timely word it was for each and every one of us here. And trust that you have been blessed and you have been ministered to by the word this morning. Now do join us for prayer meeting this Wednesday, 8pm on this same platform. And we hope to see you there. Join us for a time of prayer and intercession together for such a time as this. Do take care and stay safe everyone. God bless.